Hi, everybody. And uh, thank you for tuning in. And thank you most importantly to all of our amazing guests that are with us tonight. Um, we are talking to the team from the L Project Los Angeles, which um, this June 19th, they're hosting the Women's Freedom Festival, which is a virtual pride event featuring LGBTQI art, music, and fashion. Um, the L Project Los Angeles is a historically lesbian nonprofit organization working to promote, support, and inspire LGBTQI and BIPOC artists through educational opportunities, music, art, and technology. So we are so excited to have you all here tonight. Um, and we thought we would start by having you all introduce yourselves rather than us talk about you. We'll let everybody get to meet you personally. Um, so we thought we would start with Chris. Uh, Chris, if you don't mind um, unmuting yourself and just telling everybody a little bit about you and your involvement with the, uh, the L Project and the event. Hi everyone, uh, Chris Baldwin here. I'm the founding president of the L Project and we started this organization, um, Elizabeth Sandberg, I should say, started the organization in 2015. And uh, we kind of wanted to just create space for women outside of the bar scene, pretty much. Uh, so we started uh, with women's, uh, not women's freedom festival, we started with Frida Fest first, which was a, an art and music festival that celebrated the life and legacy of uh, Frida Kahlo. And then we kind of morphed that into Women's Freedom Festival. And that's what we're celebrating on June 19th. So, and that's it. Excellent. Um, Midori, do you want to go next? Um, sure, my name is Midori. Um, in the creative world, I go by Phoenix, so outside of the L Project. Um, so with the L Project, I am the president and the secretary, basically. Um, and outside of the L Project, I do photography. Excellent. Nan, you want to lead the... Um, and then how about um, Nick? Do you want to tell us what, how you're involved, what you're up to? Sure. Hi, my name is Nick Casey. I'm located in LA and I'm the founder uh, of Nick Casey Footwear, the first gender free footwear and accessories company, as well as the creator and executive producer of Equality Fashion, which is the first LGBTQ focused fashion week in LA. And I've been, you know, invited by Chris and Madonna to produce the fashion segment of the show and, and be a participant. So I'm very honored to be here. Excellent. And how about Elisa? Thank you so much. I'm also very honored to be here. I'm here because Nick suggested me, so I'm very gracious to Nick. And yes, I'm a professional dancer out here in LA. I'm also a burlesque performer. I've been doing burlesque for about 11 years. I'm also the creator and teacher of Empowerment and Heels, which is a burlesque school. And I'll be a part of the festival by bringing some entertainment for your viewing pleasure. So excited to share with you guys what I do. That's great, that's great. All right, um, how about uh, Terry? <laughs> Hi, my name is Terry Walters. I am a certified paralegal and I'm also um, the chief financial officer for the L Project LA. I get to write the checks. <laughs> um, I'm also an advisor for the Los Angeles Paralegal Association, and um, I'm a CASA, which is a court-appointed special advocate for kids in LA, Children's Court. Hi, glad to be here, and um, I'm just here to fill in the blanks, write the checks, and ask people for discounts. <laughs> <laughs> she does that really Excellent. well. Right? Excellent. And then we have uh, MJ. And Renee, you're together, right? Yeah, we are. We're here. Hi. Uh, hey, thanks for having us. It's what a powerful group to be among. So yeah. we're, we're happy to be here, obviously. Uh, but I'm MJ Godges. This is Renee Sotil. Uh, we're documentary filmmakers and video journalists with LGBT Hollywood. And LGBT Hollywood is a proud media sponsor <laughs> for <laughs> Freedom Festival. And we're Doing some of our art, artists and artistry and activism for domestic violence awareness 
we produced a music video called I Remember Nicole. And this is a global anthem raising awareness on domestic violence. But as we like to say, raising awareness while raising the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> I heard that years ago, a friend said, you, you know, you have to meet Chris Baldwin and, um, you know, in the L Project because she supports, um, you know, women's artistic events or, or projects. And so that's what we did. And we've been connected ever since. And um, Chris has, you know, screened it and supported it and supported us. So we really appreciate it. Excellent. And I think that leaves us with Robin and Madonna, our darling friends. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, Madonna Cacciatore, and I am the just newly installed vice president of L Project Los Angeles with these fantastic people. And um, it's my wife, Robin. You want to say something? Hi. I'm, I'm just here to support and do what I can to help with the cause. and. There you go. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And Robin and Madonna are uh, are some of our longest held passionistas. And you've probably seen them on several of our events and we love them to pieces and we're so happy to help support them and everything that you guys are all doing. So well, we're we so glad you. you're all here. Thank you for doing this work and for you know elevating women's work. We, we need this, so really appreciate it. It's our Excellent. pleasure. So, um, so Chris, do you mind telling us a little bit more about the organization and kind of the history of it? Um, sure. Um, you know, essentially, we are focused on art and music because I love art. I mean, sorry, we're focused on art and technology because I'm a nerd and I love art. Uh, so when I became president, um, I kind of merged those two things together because you know, I like like I said, we need space for women to congregate outside of bars. Um, I, I always have done, I've been throwing events since I was like 18 because I'm ex-military. So I've been doing art and fashion shows, art, music and fashion shows since, you know, for a long time. So um, I thought Frida Fest would be a great way to promote the local artists in our community. Um, and when you bring art and music together, it just transcends all the bullshit that we see uh, that's happening in our community. And it brings people together and it's healing. So um, the L Project, project uh, got sponsorship from the city of West Hollywood. And, you know, we've been doing festivals pretty much ever since. And so now we're doing Women's Freedom Festival because as you know, we're still fighting for equality, fighting for equal pay, fighting for our rights. And uh, this is a, another way, I think, uh, to, to just amplify the message of, um, you know, celebrate our perseverance and our strength. And, you know, we still have a way to go, but, you know, let's celebrate right now and, and, and work on ways to keep pushing forward. So maybe some of you could talk a little bit about why you personally got involved with the L Project, what, what the organization means to you. Well, who's going to be first now? Let, let's go. <laughs> I think I think Midori as the president. She's this is a new job for her, so she can step in and kind of uh, fill you in on that, right, Midori? Yes, I was going to jump in. I was going to jump in. Um, so for me personally, I came to the L Project. I think October twenty nineteen, I believe. So like right, like pre pandemic. Um, I think we were working towards a live, a live women's freedom festival, like in person, and then the pandemic happened, so that didn't happen. Um, but I personally came on board because um, I feel like for lesbians, there's like no space for lesbians or for women um, in the queer community, there's no space for us. It's kind of centered around other things. So anything that centered around um, women and LGBTQ, I want to be a part of um, or help or learn more or go to and support. Um, so that was the main reason why I became a part of the L Project. Okay, I'll go next. 
<laughs> I was drafted by Chris. Um, <laughs> I, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> um, and it was a wonderful opportunity to um, network with some great women. Look at the women here on this on this Zoom. This is amazing. I'm honored to be amongst all of you. And if there's anything I can do, you know, um, I definitely volunteer my skill set and uh, my time to assisting and helping this organization be what you guys know it can be. So that's why I'm here. It's a great opportunity to be involved with like-minded and professional women like yourselves. And uh, Nick, I'm, oh, sorry. sorry. I was just gonna say, Nick, I'm really curious to hear about the fashion component of all of this and, and the work you do in, in general. Well, I'm happy to share. Uh, First, the reason why you know I'm participating in the Women's Freedom Festival is one because I adore Chris and Madonna, so anything they ask me to do, I'll usually say yes to without thinking. Um, but this was really just an honor to be a part of, and also because as an AFAB, which is assigned female at birth, it was something that I felt like one to have inclusivity and two for have rep representation as like a queer, Asian, non-binary human, you know, so to be able to be a part of this event amongst such amazing you know queer women is uh something that i feel very blessed to be able to do and to be able to also you know use this as a platform to elevate other queer designers and show the diversity and beauty that's within our community is just you know the least i can do really so and i guess yeah you want to hear more about the fashion show so yeah you know unfortunately with the pandemic uh, I, as a producer of a quality fashion week, that hasn't happened uh, for the last year. And so it's been, you know, hard for a lot of us in the fashion industry because a lot of things kind of went on hold um, without being able to do live events. This was really a great opportunity to be able to, you know, show our community in this celebratory festival that we're still here and that uh, we still want everyone to feel they have access to the kind of fashion that exists to help them be their most authentic selves. So where can people see your your designs? So my designs, you know, they're gender free and I do footwear and accessories and they can go to my website, nickcasey.com. That's N-I-K-K-A-C-Y.com or Instagram, it's at Nick Casey Footwear. So. Oh, you're muted, eh? Sorry about that. <laughs> I just was saying we put all that in the chat so that people can easily just click and go check awesome. it out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, our pleasure. We love your stuff. We, Thank you. We went down the rabbit hole the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we have work to do. I can't keep looking at these really cool <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we saw um, how about tell you? Oh. I'm just going to ask Go Elisa because I know they have. Um, how, tell us, Elisa, about your what your part of this is. Give us yeah, more details. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity um, to share Nick's sentiment about inclusivity. Um, you know, growing up as a professionally trained ballet dancer, it was a lot of pressure and a lot of competition. And so, as an adult, I wanted to create a safe space for all different body types, shapes, gender identity identities, social, uh, sexual orientations, uh, races and ethnicities to enjoy dance as an adult and explore maybe your sexual expression in that way too. I find that a lot of times we're not allowed to explore our sexuality no matter however you orientate your sexuality. And with my classes, I really invite people to be playful, creative, and then also pre pandemic, we were also doing two shows a month. And so I was able to take a student that thought they would never be in front of an audience dancing or performing because they had no experience whatsoever to providing them the opportunity to do that in front of a live audience and really feel that validation and awareness of who they are and being able to express that. So with our entertainment segment that we'll be bringing to um, this festival, you'll see a bit of me performing, a bit of my students performing and kind of my overall general outlook, outlook and uh, perspective about all of it. 
And also, if you're interested, you can uh, check out empowermentandheals.com um, to see more about our classes that will soon be back into action uh, now that things in LA are starting to open up again. And hopefully we can start uh, getting those live shows going too soon. So I'm really excited about this year. Excellent. And thank you for having me. <laughs> again. Oh, our pleasure. Thank you. So who can tell us um, a little bit about the lineup of the event? I think Chris. I'll is take, I'll take care of that. Yeah, Chris, you take that one. Yeah. So some. we actually have an amazing lineup. We did a Women's Freedom Festival in 2019 at uh, Recreation Park in Long Beach, uh, like I said, in 2019. We had an incredible lineup that year. So I brought the majority of them uh, into the lineup for this year. So we've got uh, this year we've got more to say. I don't know who it's a duo from West Hollywood. We've got uh, Mila Miranda. She's going to be our closing act. She's a performer, dancer, entertainer, electronic uh, producer, um, and she's going to she's going to perform uh, the final set. B. Steadwell's from D.C. Uh, singer, songwriter, filmmaker. She's an amazing. She's uh, submitted some. Uh, you know, pretty good piece. Her piece is, uh, she's a vocalist. So she does, a, actually her voice is like it, an instrument. It's an incredible what she does. Hallie Johnson, who's like one of my favorite performers. She's a American Idol uh, contestant. She's been on The Voice. Uh, she's a composer, a singer, songwriter. Um, and she's just an incredible artist. So she'll be there along with uh, Maintain who, and JFP, J, JP changed her name. So I kind of got that a little mixed up, but JFP now, that's Julie Potter and her friend's going to be performing along with Vixen Noir. Uh, who else we have on this list? The Queer Boy Band, Christina LaRocca. Uh, it's going to be King Cyborg. So we've got a great, amazing lineup. Oh, Landon, uh, Landon Cider. We just booked Landon Cider. And I, we just booked Alyssa Marquez. She's going to be performing. And who else? Who else, Nick? Did I miss anybody? Oh, our comedians, Devin, uh, Devin Buffet, uh, Jenny McKnight, McNulty, and Annie McKnight. They're all performing co comedy for the show as well. So we've got a quite, uh, it's going to be a lengthy, it's going to be four hours of content, women-focused content. Uh, we're going to have some poetry. You guys will get to see a little, a uh, couple of short films. So stay tuned. June 19th, get your tickets on Eventbrite. Check out our FB page, L, L Project LA. We just put the link to uh, Eventbrite to the ticket page uh, in go. the comments. So there you go. people can go and buy their tickets right away. And there are some um, guest speakers too, right? Right, we'll have Mayor Horvath, uh, who, uh, Mayor Horvath and Councilwoman Seppi Shine, they co-sponsored the, the bill to, to co-sponsor the event. So. Uh, we'll have them speaking along with Catherine Gray and a couple of others. I think Nick's going to speak too, right, Nick? Nick is going to be one of our guest speakers. You twisted my arm, so yes. <laughs> yeah. So Nick's going to speak. So we've got quite a few uh, guest speakers for you. And by the way, a uh, great shout out to Catherine Gray and uh, She Angels. Who... And the She Angels are investors, our sponsors, She Angel Investors, uh, Pratt Williams Law, uh, California Families in Focus, Angel Macias, she's also a sponsor, a returning sponsor. So uh, we give a big shout out to them and to Rocco's because they were uh, very supportive also to the Abbey because they've been very supportive. Uh, they supported us since the very beginning, since Freedom Fest. So we appreciate everybody. Thank you. Excellent. Well, that sounds like an amazing lineup. So it's four hours. It's, and it's all on. It's all on Zoom. It's all. It's going to be streaming be on uh, several platforms, and we'll get that out to you once we finalize uh, where mm -hmm. we got to make sure the licensing, music licensing, is cleared. Uh, so we'll get that out to everybody in a couple weeks, or maybe within a week or so. Um, and yeah, you're gonna. You guys can buy your tickets, and then you'll be able to see the show online, streamed online. Hopefully next year we'll be back in person. Right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. 
And what time does the event start? Starts at 11 a.m. Okay. And we'll run till three, somewhere around three. And we'll have intermission. It's not like you gotta have to stay, you know, plastered to your screen the whole time. <laughs> and of course there'll be on demand afterwards if people can watch, watch performances afterwards. Great. Yeah. Excellent. So where, um, I, I know people can also make donations to the L Project. So where do the donations go? Uh, I would say go to our website first and that's uh, thelproject.org. You can go to Venmo. Our Venmo handle is at L Project LA. Uh, Terry, where's our other? Do we have another? Oh. For the donation links? Good question. Yeah, we right. definitely so have the PayPal, Venmo. PayPal, those are two. PayPal and Venmo are, are the best right now. And also, of course, if we're running donations on Facebook, if you see anything come up, go ahead and hit that donation button. <laughs> Perfect. We put all the information that you just said into the chat so that everybody can easily just drop a little money this way. Right. And as a matter of fact, business owners, if you're a female business owner and you want a spot on our online program, we've got a spot for you. You guys can drop us an email at the.lproject at gmail.com. Okay. And if you want to sponsor, do hit us up at, at the L Project. Awesome. Chris, do you want to clarify on like when you say, you know, women-owned businesses, like, is that exclusive? Well, LGBT, to... I'm just, it, you know, I say Women's Freedom Festival, but we are all inclusive. We are multicultural. We are intergenerational. So this organization, is there's no hate here. Okay, so it's all inclusive. Yeah, totally. I say, so LGBT-owned businesses, especially if you've been hit hard during the pandemic, you know, reach out to us. We'll blast you out. If you're a community organization, we'll blast you out free of charge. Okay, right. your business. I would also and, like to add that it's important, you know, for us to uh, sell tickets and get some, you know, financial support. We pay all of our performers. We don't believe that any woman should any longer provide entertainment services or, you know, professional services for free. So, you know, it's not much, but, you know, it, I think we're a nonprofit who honors and respects that women have been, you know, on the lower end of the uh, pay spectrum for our duration. So we, you know, we try to do everything we can to raise money to help pay our performers. And we are certainly respectful of their time and energy. So we thank you that for- That money is circulated right back into the community. Right. It doesn't, yeah, it just goes back- We don't get paid, but everybody at the L Project is 100% volunteer. No one gets paid here. Yeah, I think that's really important to, to stress again. Every Everything you raise, you give back to the community. Goes right back to the artists or, or out to the community. And our hope is to do more of this. You know, um, this is a great annual festival. And, and I think with the team that we have on the board right now and our community support, we can look at doing, you know, other kinds of, you know, events that promote and elevate women in arts and technology and uh, entertainment, cinema, everything. So, you know, a goal of, of my personal goal of, and reason for joining the board, one of them, except Chris, every all roads point to Chris, <laughs> but <laughs> because I love Chris so much, but, um, you know, and I also am incredibly fond of our board. I just feel like we've got a great group of people and everybody you see on this and beyond uh, have been instrumental in helping propel this event. It's not easy to do something like this of this, you know, length and caliber. And I just would like to thank everybody on this call and beyond for the work that they've done. Our Sheila and our whole production team. Right. I piggyback on that. Thank you. Yep, for real. Beyond getting tickets for this event and donating money, how can people get involved in general? with the organization? Um, I would say just drop us an email or hit us up on our Facebook page. Uh, we're pretty good at getting back to people right away. So if you want to get involved, definitely get involved. We 
Um, we're always looking for volunteers for especially for our next event when this is over. You know, I, I definitely anticipate uh, us doing Frida Fest again, you know, and then maybe with Women's Freedom Festival again for Pride next year. So uh, there's always opportunity. Um, our art, uh, Ash Lopez is our uh, tech goddess and, and we're hoping to put some tech programming together. So um, yeah, if there's anybody in the tech field that wants to volunteer their time or uh, yeah, just drop us a line or whatever it is that you do, just drop us a line. I could attest that Chris responds because when the friend said, you know, you have to contact Chris Baldwin, I just sent this random, you know, email and she got right back and she booked, I remember to call at some events. And, um, and so at this one, we said, you know, we got to get more involved and with her and Superwoman Madonna, who we've been admiring from afar for years. Um, it's a really, you know, amazing team. So I definitely encourage people to reach out to Chris and then you're going to be addicted like we are. And <laughs> uh, you're going to look for morning texts. Like it's and, only and I text at two or three o'clock in the morning. So my board is sick of me right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't hear, you're like, what? you start going through withdrawal. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, organization that supports, you know, women, especially, you know, our project with raising awareness on domestic violence. It's not one that, you know, people, gravitate to right away, but we learned that the LGBT community, Q community, um, experiences that actually at a higher rate than the straight community. So um, that's why it's really important for us to get the, the word out and, and to, you know, raise awareness as much as we could. And with action, with action. Right, and it, like, these events are always sort of these markers where, you know, we got to get it together, get our acts together, literally. and. <laughs> In the meantime, you get to meet, you know, fantastic people like you, and Chris just keeps this thing, the momentum going with these events and all the all of us connecting and um, doing our thing together. So it's, uh, you know, it's a party with a purpose, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the insights. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, okay. no, no, hey, MJ, tell us a little bit um, about I Remember Nicole. Now, Amy and I have seen it. We saw it at one of the events, but. Right. Tell, tell our viewers about it. Well, it'll be, I think we have a slot in this, don't we? Do <laughs> yeah, we, have a slot? we do because okay. we're editing it. We're editing oh, it. So, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> gonna air. On. You have a permanent slot. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's a taboo subject too. We feel, realize, you know, interviewing people and talking to people about it, we realize it's just so, is the word endemic? Like anyone we talk to has a story about mm -hmm. it or their family mm -hmm. or someone they know. And it's just something that isn't talked about. It's uh, so, you know, getting it out there as much as possible. We always, you know, shining a light on something creates a dialogue and um, raises awareness. So that's, we thought, you know, with this song, like Chris was saying, with music and artists mm -hmm. and bands, you can you can get these kind of stories out there are these points of views. And so we realized with the song, like raising awareness while raising the roof, you know, there's no, there's nothing about, there's no whispers here, right? That's we're we going to talk about it. We're going to sing about it and, uh, you know, come out of the closet about it, I guess. Right. That's yeah. why we went that route instead of a documentary, which we normally make. And, uh, Nicole is a metaphor for Nicole Brown Simpson, who was murdered just, um, you know, six miles west of West Hollywood and kind of put domestic violence in the national spotlight. But it really is, um, you know, we sing songs with people's names we don't know. So it's really meant to identify with everyone. And even, you know, the new gener young generation, my nieces didn't know who she was, but they still, you know, related to it and had stories of their friends in high school. So um, even at one niece that said, when you talked about it, she told Renee about or was it? I hope he was an ex. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, yeah. Ex, nobody but, knew about it until you know. Yeah, and in the LGBT community, people don't even realize it's domestic violence. A lot of times, you know, when you're being called names or pushed or or whatever. So, yeah. So I, you know, a lot of gratitude again to Chris for seeing how important it is, and you know, Madonna as well, and everyone. So yeah, it's all you. about. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a healthy thing to do. Yeah, yeah, instead of sitting in a bar getting to meet people. <laughs> doing yeah. this kind of thing you know yeah. But, yeah. yeah really really important topic to discuss for sure um and and madonna this is kind of all part i mean this is obviously part of pride month um and you've got other 
uh, work you're doing. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, I went from almost complete uh, retirement to I can't check all my emails now because there's so many. Um, so I'm working, of course, with this um, uh, L project, but I also am working with Genevieve and West Hollywood Chamber of Commerce to help sort of uh, bring the businesses on board for a WeHo Pride 21. So there's a hashtag WeHo Pride 21. Um, and uh, Women's Freedom Festival will be under that umbrella, but I'm working with you know some of the venues to see if we can get maybe a little, a small COVID friendly watch party for this. Uh, I'm working with a venue specifically for that, and perhaps to bring out some, I don't wanna say anything, but maybe some motorcycles, who knows? We're, there's no parade, but the idea is that um, the WeHo Chamber is sort of overseeing and working with the city of West Hollywood to uh, create a really fun experience via the businesses this year, following county guidelines for COVID compliance and making sure that you know anybody who shows up, um, that the businesses are monitoring how many people are in their restaurants and bars. But they all need help and they all need support. They've been you know shut down for a year, so our goal and we hope pride is to do that and. Um, and the Women's Freedom Festival will be a, a part of that. That weekend is June, the, the weekend is June 25th through 27th, which will be the sort of part of that experience. But there will be um, things going on all month, such as this and some other uh, events that'll be part of that, including events through the arts program, One City, One Pride. And um, so it's really cool to have sort of the community come together in this way and support each other. And then there's also the pilot program of out on Robertson that's starting up that our, we will have a booth there. We're working on which dates will be there for as L project, but we hope to be there also for we hope pride weekend. And the other thing that I'm uh, working on is uh, out loud raising voices, the festival, the concert at the Coliseum, which is a, uh, 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 it's coming right up the first weekend in June. It's Adam Lambert and who, uh, Robin has a client, Mad Catch Entertainment performing there. Who's that? Um, yeah, Angel, Angel Bonilla. Angel who's Bonilla. on The Voice and X Factor, um, trans female from the Philippines. Um, but that's a three day event. And that event is supporting other like Friday night, we'll be supporting Compton Pride. And then there are a number of pride organizations that are partnering with that over the weekend. So there's a, um, a Twitch digital platform and then there's the concert, which will actually be at the Coliseum and I uh, will be, you know, I believe COVID compliant as well. I mean, it's a huge Coliseum. So I'm sure that it's there's- for Stonewall Day. What? It's for Stonewall Day. Yeah, it's for Stonewall Day. It's in honor of Stonewall Day. So that's you know some of the things I'm working on. I'd also like to announce that I'm part of the Interpride organization now, um, the Global Pride Organizers and Umbrella. Uh, I will be working on fund development for them as well. So that just happened. Um, so I was you know I was like all things Pride. I just love my community <laughs> and hopefully you know I'll be doing this till. Till I can't anymore and or till we don't need it but I don't see that in my lifetime we're always going to need to support each other so I'm happy to be in these groups of people who are like-minded and who want to change the world on this level makes me happy as an older person probably the oldest in this room uh even though I am even older than Chris I can attest to that um it's nice to pass the baton to people who really care and that's what we're seeing a lot of that they're also seeing a large fire truck outside of our house so i hope everything's okay <laughs> <laughs> anyway i'll stop with that but thank you for asking out loud, out loud raising voices we hope pride 21 and then of course all the l project hashtags excellent and does anyone else have any other projects that they want to tell us about i do yeah, Before I hop off, yeah, I just wanted to share that um, actually recently because of the pandemic, having had time to really reevaluate what are the things I, I want to, you know, stay passionate about and not overwork myself, but, you know, work smarter about it. So I've joined three nonprofit organizations as board members, 
uh, of Trans Can Work, uh, which is a nonprofit that focuses on uplifting and educating and providing resources for trans folks, trans and non-binary folks to, you know, figure out how to, you know, work their resume, how to get a job and teach corporations and companies on how to be more diverse and inclusive. Uh, we're having a job fair, a series of job fairs actually this year in five different cities, starting with Dallas, uh, which is going to be in, uh, I believe, the beginning of July. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, and we're, we're working with HRC on that to, to uh, collaborate to build this event. Uh, I'm also on the board of the Queer 26, which is a very young, newly founded uh, nonprofit organization that focuses on uh, queer folks, uh, young queer folks in the multimedia uh, industry. So from publishing to film, to uh, music and writing, uh, it focuses on the, in that arena. So I'm really excited about that. And finally, the third is uh, called Inclusive Breast Health, or Community, we're still new, so it's Inclusive Community for Breast Health. And, uh, and that's something literally from the ground up that we're building. So I'm very excited because, you know, a lot of people don't realize that breast cancer uh, affects not only women. Excellent. Just wanted to share that. <laughs> Excellent, right. thank you. God, you all make me tired. I know. I don't know, how you're all, I don't know how you're all doing all this stuff. I think we're doing a lot. Then. <laughs> yeah, so actually Madonna's not the oldest. I'm actually like 85, but I mean, <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> oh, wow. <You> look fabulous. <laughs> I, I'm 86. Like, I still got you beat. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Anybody else have anything that they want to let everybody know about? Um, all right, Dora, then we Dora, have... you don't want to talk about your photography? Oh, tell us about your photography. She's a great photographer. <laughs> Come on. She's an amazing photographer. She's the one who really... photos for Women's Freedom Festival. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I really don't have anything going on. I just do my, I do my own thing. I don't have a project right now focused on anything. I kind of just, whoever hits me up for photography, I kind of do it. I kind of started off with just doing events, but then that declined. I think my last event that I did was actually Pride 2019. And then Women's Stream Festival, I did some behind the scenes for it um, as far as events goes. Um, now that hospitals are opening back up, I just got some extra vaccines that I needed, like my Tdap shot and all that other stuff because I'm going to be a newborn photographer. Um, and other than that, I've been looking to work with more LGBT um, people, families. Um, but I don't have any specific projects going on right now. So. <laughs> Good job. <Okay. laughs> and, and Terry, do you have any other uh, stuff you want to say about the legal work that you do? Um, I am no longer a director, thank goodness, for the Paralegal Association. I get to actually train and, and guide and um, lead the other directors um, let them give them their wings so that they can fly and be great people as well for, and do great things for the community. So I'm glad to be an advisor for the Paralegal Association, um, but no longer having to be a director to do all the events. <laughs> um, I'm also, like I said, a, a CASA, a court appointed advocate. So I, I work with Children's Court and um, I have a foster kid that I deal with and do reports to the judge. And um, other than that, I am constantly trying to learn and get new certifications and certificates, hence all those letters after my name. Um, and um, I'm currently actually in the technology doing um, e-discovery, which is definitely falls within this realm of technology um, on the legal side. And um, I'm looking forward to maybe helping this organization and people who are in the legal field be a little bit more um, educated on the new legal technology that's going out um, and being practiced in the law firms. So that's about it. Incredible. Well, we're getting close to the end and we thought we would end um, in a way that we actually usually start our interviews uh, with everybody, which is um, 
since we're the passionistas and you are now all our passionistas too, um, we were hoping that maybe you'd all just uh, tell us the, the thing you're most passionate about. Well, I will start with that. Um, I'm passionate about what I do for my day job, which is um, I have a training business, a fitness company, Fight Goddess Fitness. You guys can follow me on Instagram at LA Fight Goddess. And um, I'm passionate about social justice. Uh, of course, when uh, the L Project, uh, you know, I've been with the L Project for five years. And so that pretty much consumes my day. I mean, you know, working and then Oh, and I, I'm also an inventor on the side, and I, I just got a patent on one of my punching bags. So that is, is a, so cool. This is called the Skull oh. Double End Punching Bag. I need that. That is great. That and, is awesome. Yeah, so I just got a patent on this last year. So I'm, I'm, that's, the, that's the other thing I'm working on outside of this. If I love how that's an to... asterisk. Oh, I'm an inventor on the side. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little. Yeah, I know. <laughs> first, if you need someone to test that for you, let me know, okay? I got, I got a couple <laughs> bags for you, Nick. I'm going to give you one. Yeah. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. That is cool. I'll go All next because right. I have to drop off. Uh, okay, I am great. super, super passionate about equality. And what started in a, in a journey, a lifetime journey of thinking that it was about, you know, equality for immigrants, then became equality for gender equality, and then LGBT rights equality. And, and, you know, now I think that, I hope that my legacy is just that whatever actions I've taken, whatever choices that I've made, that it has helped and benefited getting us closer to true equality for all people. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We thank you for you having me. Places yes. to be. Thanks. So thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I guess I'll go next too, but there's some background noise. Can you guys hear that? Yeah. No, a no? little bit, but okay. we're okay. Just a You're little bit. Good. Okay. Fantastic. I'll keep it short then. Um, I'm truly passionate about empowerment, um, allowing people to explore and develop the tools to feel and become empowered, um, I think is the thing that gets me out of bed most in the morning. The fact that I know that I can help better people's lives is truly the most special gift in the world. So that's my passion. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go because um, y'all got me, y'all got me all inspired over here. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm passionate about you know, I've, I've done all my life theater, dance, acting. And um, so sort of at my age, really 86, reinventing my acting career and sort of really believing that I can do that again. Uh, that I never stopped, but really believing that I could pursue that fully. Um, and so I, you know, I'm passionate about using, you know, working on projects, whether it's a play or a show or whatever that um, that promotes social justice or that educates or that has characters who sort of teach people, you know, something about the human condition and how we treat each other and and you know whether you're playing the character who's you know the evangel evangelistic mother of a gay son, which I did once, which was really hard for me, or whether it's um, you know somebody who's who's really out there as a rebel, you know? So it, that's really, that's my greatest passion in life. Up. Huh? Do you have one coming up? I have what coming up? Oh yeah, I do have a short coming up that I'm uh, working on at the end of the month, which I'm super excited about and I can talk about later. It's a, sh it's a short film. Yeah, so that's mine. Robin? You know, I, I, I don't know, honestly, I, I have always been a focus for our community and doing what I can to uplift and to protect and fight. Um, I managed an apartment building that we took from, that was only just Madonna and I and one other guy in our community in the building to uh, just over half the building now of LGBTQIA2+. And I just recently retired from there saying, okay, there's your home. 
take it now go live, you know, kind of a thing. So, and then as Mag with Mad Catch, I represent actors and writers and the, I have a very large uh, amount of our community as well um, in the LGBTQIA non-binary and non-conforming. So, um, and my focus for that is to not only get them work, but to protect them in our industry, you know, to be able to recognize our community in our industry uh, in film and television and theater is very new. It really is very new. We didn't hear about trans community or our non-binary was never a word in our community. I mean, on film and television. So um, to be able to protect them and show them off and share them with the world is always kind of fun. So that's all. Hey, who's next? I'll go next. <laughs> I'll go next. And I'm not going to take all the credit for this because I kind of got this from my tarot reader, reader Ryan. Um, but I'm most passionate about existing. So like existing in any forms because I like adventure, just existing, being myself. Um, I think in 2020, I got married to my now wife and I went through a lot with like my mom and same sex and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> on top of COVID and everything else. So existing is what I'm most passionate about, um, authentically being myself. Um, one of the reasons why I enjoy taking pictures of other people, because I like to capture them in their moments and showing them how they, how they look when they're most happy and when they're most themselves and authentic. Um, so that's my passion. My passion is truly existing, looking at other people existing. I like people watching just because I like seeing other people happy. Um, so yeah, I'm here for adventure. I'm here for hikes, coffees in the morning, sunsets, sunrises, um, all that stuff. It's beautiful. How about Terry? <laughs> okay, I'm passionate about each one teach one, you know, guidance. A lot of time we don't have guidance out there, you know, uh, the different democratic, de democratics, blah, demographics. We don't have guidance. We don't have positive feedback, you know, just to uh, guide us on where we need to be and what we need to do and how to do it correctly. Um, I'm passionate about teaching and um, allowing that person to grow, you know, and then they're passing it along the growth and the skills, the life skills, educational skills, technology skills, you know, um, I'm, I'm passionate about that. And I'm being the CFO, I'm passionate about saving money and you guys donating your time <laughs> to help other people. I can people. attest to that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Donate your time. I'm telling you, you give, it's better to give than to receive. You do get that back tenfold, you know, it, it's kind of like, um, like the old heritage, the old saying, each one teach one. And it's, it is it is truly better to give than to receive. You're blessed. You're blessing someone and in, in turn, you're getting blessed. And where can they donate again, Terry? <laughs> At the <laughs> L Project. Got for Venmo. And um, Venmo. Yeah. The L Project LA on PayPal and L Project LA for Venmo. We also have several um, Facebook links that are going out. Uh, you can click on any of those links and donate as well. Um, and please make sure you get your tickets for this event. It's going to be amazing. It's a great lineup. $15. It's a great lineup. 15 bucks or whatever you'd like to donate. You know, you want to donate an extra five, please do so. It's going to helping these uh, different people and these performers. You know, it's beautiful when it all comes together. Yeah, and we're going to make it super easy for people to find it. We're going to keep putting this information in the chat over and over and over again. So you'll just you can't help but see it oh, and right. open your pockets. <laughs> so I think that leaves, that leaves Renee and NJ. Well, this is Lennon, this is John. Oh, hi, Lennon. Hi, Lennon. <laughs> okay, Renee and MJ. I'm learning new passions, hearing all of your passions and the way you look at everything. So thanks. This yeah. is you know inspiring. And um, I, I guess uh, one passion, of course, is like creating content, whether it's long or short form, like a real about real people and stories and music that would otherwise probably not get out there and in, impacting people that can change their minds to make you know the world a better place and a smaller one. So we're all 
more relatable to each other. And, and of course the environment, that's a passion being a lesbian vegetarian, you know, that's just <laughs> part of the DNA. And then hearing uh, Chris's <laughs> thing with the fight goddess and stuff, I think I have a new passion because I want to learn how to do this stuff, you know. These are my couch potato crew. Yeah, we're the, couch <laughs> <laughs> we're the official couch potatoes of the L project. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, that's a really good question. So besides MJ, Mary Jo. <laughs> Mojo, um, Mary Jo, MJ, my passion, maybe. <laughs> um, I have a, a few, and I know you get as you get older, they change, but a lifelong one for sure has been, um, you know, space. We think we're astronauts. If you look around, you'll see all these things. And we did a, a documentary on Krista McAuliffe, who was the teacher in space, the board challenger. And um, everything, all our films are streaming on Amazon Prime and stuff. But, um, but that's still a passion of mine, even though it was a long time ago. We still get, you know, we still speak at museums and space centers and things every year on her. And getting to know the family was just really powerful. And I, I'm kind of, um, I remember Nicole Project, even though it's a music video, is the, I think our second one that I'm the most passionate about, where it reminds me of our Krista one, where we've got to know the family and it's just, so so important and people think they know krista she was a really you know kick butt woman and educator yeah, I mean, yeah she like, might have so been they like think they know her until they see this and <laughs> yeah. that's what i'm kind of finding about you know this project um oh and so just one thing um mayor pro tem lauren meister um appointed me to, appointed me to the lesbian and gay advisory board for the city of west hollywood in january and she's also uh, supports the Women's Freedom Festival, and she actually sponsored the first Freedom Fest years ago. Um, but at my first meeting in um, January, I brought a motion for domestic violence awareness. So it's up to 10 pages long now. Um, it's going really well, so I think that's going to change it. And now, um, I actually had two of them my first meeting, but I was afraid to mention the second one because I didn't know people because they were looking at me like, who are you? And I didn't really know what emotion was at the time. <laughs> uh, but it was on, it's on, um, you know, feral city helping the feral cats in the neighborhood, which I've reached out to the city for the last few years about that. And now I'm going to really use Janie, um, a feral cat that recently died, that's lived in our yard for 10 years as, you know, an example and what we learned from her. So, um, so the, the point is that our LGAP meetings are, every, are the second Thursday of every month and you guys can join on and we love to have people talk in public comment or just even join on and listen to us. And we would support whatever you're interested in. So the LGAP. Yeah, I would like to just uh, really quickly um, say that I'm also passionate about animals and saving animals and not eating animals. And I've been vegan for, Robin and I both have been vegan for many years. I also want to make a quick correction. It's She Angels Foundation. So just to, you know, to make sure that we know that these people are doing grants for women in the community and they're just a, a generous group of people. So She Angels Foundation is the organization that is supporting us. And we thank you again, Catherine Gray and team. We thank everyone at She Angels and the city of West Hollywood and our new sponsor, uh, Pratt Williams Law. They just came on board today. That's great. Well, we can't thank you all enough for being here with us and for doing all the incredible work that you all do. Um, it was lovely to meet you all and to see you and Robin and Madonna again. Um, and so everyone who's watching, please remember, mark your calendars, June 19th, 11 a.m., $15 for this amazing lineup of entertainment. Um, you can go to Eventbrite. We've dropped the link in the chat. So please get your tickets. And we wish you guys all the success in the world. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Amy and Thank Nancy. you. Thank you for having us. It's our pleasure. Our, our door is always open if we can help you, any of you promote anything. Uh, Appreciate we, that. You know, we're always here, anytime, really. All right. Yeah. Let Thank us know. You. Okay. Right, bye, -bye. bye, everyone. Bye-bye.